Hi, my name is Gigi Shadid, and I'm a teacher at the St. Constantine School. I've been teaching for over 22 years, and of the years I've been teaching, I've taught math for 14 years, both in the public and parochial schools. When I taught in Fort Bend ISD five years ago, I was challenged in the way to teach math different than the way I used to learn math when I was a kid. And at first I was kind of resisting this whole, why do we have to teach math so many ways? For example, let me show you what I use. I have this chart here that we, we show, for example, I teach first grade right now, and I also teach a sixth grade class. I've taught second grade math, third grade math. I've taught high school math. So I, I, I've seen math at different ages and stages, but when I taught second grade and even now teaching first, I never used to teach math this way, right? This is teaching kids not just to memorize facts, but to understand numbers and um, knowing you know, strategies for, for doing addition and subtraction. Um, and I have to say in all my years of teaching Singapore math, the dimensions curriculum is by far the most effective curriculum that I've ever had the pleasure to teach with because it is all about math sense and understanding and math sense is something that not a lot of people have. They can, you know, I used to be able to teach students and I still can, I can teach you how to get the right answer. I can teach you the algorithm and boom, you can know the rules for adding and subtracting fractions, decimals, you name it. I can teach you the rules for dividing decimals, but you have to understand what's happening. And the thing I love about Singapore math, this dimensions curriculum is that it's all about, you know, number sense, conceptualization and visualization. Let me give you an example. When we were trained this summer, the trainer said, when you give a baby an apple, you don't just say, you don't just write the word apple, you give them an apple and you let them smell and touch and taste the apple and feel the apple. Then you can show them a picture of an apple and say, apple. And lastly, you can write A-P-P-L-E on the board and they can see. They'll connect it. They've had this experience. They've had this tactile experience with an apple. They can identify it in a picture. And now when it's written in an abstract form, they can say, I know what an apple is. The same thing with math. We must start with concrete models, pictorial models, and then we go to the abstract. And as a teacher of math for many years, I love this curriculum because it's not just showing you how to get the answer, but it's making the students stop and pause and think about numbers and whether or not they make sense. And the thing about dimensions, it's very logical. They teach it in a logical order. That one thing you're learning, it builds on to the next and it just makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna give you an elementary example of just how differently we learn math than whenever I was a kid. The example of eight plus five. I was just doing it with my students before this video, right? And we're like, okay, we can say eight plus five. There's different kids, we'll use their fingers, we'll start different strategies. You know, we start with eight objects first. We talk about objects, eight objects, five objects. Then we bring in the 10 frames and we show them what eight looks like on a 10 frame, what five looks like on a 10 frame, so they can visualize it in another way. And then we say, well, look, we notice that eight and two make a 10. I can decompose this five. We talk a lot about number bonds in the curriculum, right? Why do we need to know number bonds? A number bond is here's the whole number, five. You can break it apart into two and three, part, part, whole. Why do kids need to know that? Because they need to be able to break apart numbers just as if you would break apart a unifix cube and say two and three make five. I can say, okay, I can break apart this five and give two to the eight and make it a 10. So in my head, I'm doing this in my head now, but we're teaching them with concrete models and then pictorial models and saying eight plus five is really 10 plus three. It's 10 plus three, it's two more. I take away two mentally and tens are your friends. It's easy to add 10, 10 and three make 13. Um, again, it's different than the way we learned. Making tens was on that strategy sheet I was telling you. Another one is doubles, memorizing your doubles facts. If you know four plus four, then you know four plus five is a doubles plus one. All right, you can think addition when you're using subtraction. We use number lines. We have all of these strategies that are so important. I mean, being a teacher for this long, I have seen the effectiveness of kids being able to visually see what's going on. Like I teach sixth grade math. I teach them how to add and subtract, multiply and divide fractions. In the past, 
I taught them the rules, they could get the answer. But they couldn't visually tell me what was happening when you are dividing a fraction. What's happening? And that's why I think bar models are super effective. It helps you visualize because there's just so much going on in the problem. I, I can't, I really can't say enough good things about the Singapore Dimensions curriculum. It is not Common Core. It is certainly not. It's teaching them how to have number sense. When I'm teaching them decimals, for example, right now I'm teaching multiplying decimals. If I were to say 19.3 times um, 5.7 six or 76 hundredths, right? So, you know, my students, I would teach them when you multiply decimals, ignore the decimal until the end, and then you count how many decimal places um, to the right of the decimal. So your answer is supposed to have three decimal places. You can learn the rule. Or we could say to them, let's think. 19 is close to 20. What's 20 times five? A hundred. So you need to know that that answer should be close to 100. And when you finish multiplying it, you'll know where the decimal point goes because it won't make sense for the answer not to be close to 100. When you're teaching multiplying, we have to teach them beyond just the algorithms because they need to be able to do mental math and have math sense. Let's try picking on the number 19 again. If I have 19 times, I don't know, six, right? We have to be able to teach the kids 19 times six is hard. But 19 is close to 20, right? 20 times 6 is really, really 6 times 10 times 2. Or you could just say 2 times 6 is 12, and then there's that 0. Because it's 20, not 2. It's a power of 10. And since I added 1 to the 19, I added 6. I subtract 6 from 120, and I get 114. So it's like... It's a way to give kids access to the problems visually. It helps them do mental math. It helps them have number sense. Um, it's, it's super effective. And I teach that sixth grade class, and it does make a difference when they come in already being able to decompose numbers, create bar models and label them correctly, think about numbers and their relationships. Then the rules are easy. The rules are easy once they do that. I know it's hard. As a parent, I have three kids, okay? I have a fifth grader, a seventh grader, and a ninth grader. And I've seen the effectiveness of these models in my own kids and how it does help them visualize and understand math a lot better. And I'm so excited about this curriculum. And if you have any questions about it and would like more information, whether it's for a younger elementary grade student or a middle school student, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much. God bless.